when people lie, people generally don't die. But this president is lying to you about Benghazi in such spectacular fashion that I believe people will go to prison. This is impeachable. The president might go to prison for this one. What is happening with Benghazi is so far beyond lying, it is staggering. Now, in Ohio, if you're listening to the president and he says this, you can say, well, he's just playing a word game. Well, he's doing this. No, he is lying. And he believes that he can get away with it. And you will accept it. Now, it is important for you to understand why you can't accept the little lies, even though this isn't a little lie. In every single case in my memory, if someone was caught on something that was that wrong, and he's wrong on so many things from the debate, you immediately just get off it. You may not apologize, but you get off it because people will hold your feet to the fire. But no one is holding his feet to the fire. The press will say, he said that, but they will not say, why are you still saying this on the campaign trail? The president's still out saying lies, saying these things that he knows are now not true. They're not questioning him on those things. But now we have beginning of the truth on Benghazi. Five days into the Benghazi scandal when no one was saying anything, I presented a theory. It was a Monday. It was the Monday after, it was six days, the Monday after the attack. And I got on the air and I told you exactly what was happening. I told you that this uh, uh, ambassador was involved in running guns. And he was running guns to Al-Qaeda in Libya. And he was running guns through Turkey into Syria. And whether it was a deal that went bad, I don't know. But that's what happened. And the White House knew. That was six days into it. We continued to further the story. And as everyone else is still arguing about whether it was the videotape or not, we have been furthering the story. Today, we have evidence that is staggering. We now have a memo Posted from the blaze. We now have a memo to the White House two hours after the attacks began. Last night on the TV show, I laid it out again on exactly the timeline, exactly what happened when. At 1 o'clock or 12.54 um, in the afternoon on September 11th, the White House was warned that there was Somebody watching the Benghazi safe house. So you know, do not let any member of the press get away with calling this a, a embassy safe house. It is not. It was a CIA safe house. Now, why in the most dangerous place in one of the most dangerous parts of the world on September 11th, when the ambassador knows he's under attack, The documents now show he wrote the night before and said, help me, there's trouble. Why would he be at a CIA safe house? What was he doing there? I kept asking the question, what is he doing there? What was he doing there? We now know he was having dinner with the general counsel of Turkey. Remember that President Obama is good friends with the Turkish ambassador, the Turkish ambassador, I'm sorry, the Turkish prime minister. Turkey is, fancies itself the head of the caliphate. The Turkish ambassador and Barack Obama, it has been widely reported that that's really his only real friend in foreign policy. That is the guy he called first when he won the presidency. Not, not England, not Israel, but the Turkish ambassador. This guy's, this, guy's, this guy's a Sharia law guy. Not a good guy. Why was the general counsel of Turkey meeting with our ambassador at a CIA safe house on September 11th? 
And here's where it gets strange. At 1254, the White House, in, in emails to the Situation Room, the White House is alerted there are people watching our safe house. The ambassador and the Turkish general counsel are in the safe house having dinner. And there are people watching the exits. That's what the memo says. They're watching the exits. One guy says, I don't know if we're going to get out of here alive. So we know that they know inside this is serious. We don't know if we'll get out of this one alive. An hour after that, the Turkish ambassador leaves through the front door and the front gate, unmolested. Now you tell me, why was the Turkish ambassador there, or the Turkish general counsel there? Why was he there? Why were they having dinner? Why was it so important on September 11th to go to the most dangerous city, to a CIA safe house? An hour after he leaves... The fight begins. We now know that the White House sent a drone. Somebody, the military, somebody sent a drone. So there was a live video feed of what was going on. They're watching it in the State Department. They're watching it at the Pentagon. They're watching it at Langley. And they're watching it in the, C- in the, in the uh, Situation Room. At 5 o'clock in the afternoon... Leon Panetta has a meeting with the President of the United States. The first email comes at 4.05. So the Secretary of Defense arrives at the White House to have a meeting with the President 55 minutes after the Situation Room and everybody else gets an email saying, Libya, the uh, safe house, is under attack. That's three hours after the president uh, uh, got the first warning that somebody was watching the safe house. So they all know that something's going down there. At 4.05, first email comes in, says we're under attack. Leon Panetta arrives at the White House at 5 o'clock for a meeting with the president, the vice president, in the Oval Office. Now, how they can have a drone, the Secretary of Defense and an ambassador under attack and not say, hey, what do you say we catch the, uh, the 505 elevator downstairs to the Situation Room and watch what's going on? Let's get briefed in the Situation Room and find out what's going on. They have all of the information there. 454 Washington time. There's another report to the Situation Room. The embassy in Tripoli has reported that firing at the U.S. diplomatic mission in Benghazi has stopped and the compound had been cleared. Said the response team was at the site attempting to locate missing personnel. At 6.07 that night to the Situation Room, attack update number two, Ansar al-Sharia claims responsibility for the Benghazi attack. Can somebody hand that, that magnet to me right there from the, that the yellow magnet right there on Libya? See it? On the back of that, if that says it's Ansar al-Sharia, and does it? No, it says Hezbollah. Um, okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is Ansar al-Sharia is the group that we were dealing with Um in Libya, giving them guns. This is why the White House covered. Because we, our ambassador was killed by a gun guy we were running guns to, and we are still running guns today. In fact, let me give you this story <clears throat> from... I don't have it. Um, there's a story today from Russia... <clears throat> Russia is now verifying, um, and we have had other reports, not just from Russia, but Russia today is verifying that U.S. Stinger missiles are in the hands of the Syrian rebels. The Syrian rebels, which are connected to Al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood. We also have a report now from the New York Times that we are using the Muslim Brotherhood 
to arm the rebels in Syria. This president is on the wrong side. It is so crystal clear. You can, at this point, you can begin to make a case for treason. But let's just take it one step at a time. The President of the United States of America, the Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of State, have all lied to you. They have lied to you and said, this might be a video. We don't have all the information. With The information is still sketchy. It's confusing. No. We now have the documents. We now have the documents that came into the Situation Room saying there's an attack they're watching. Then we have the documents that we have a live video feed in the Situation Room so they could see that there was no protest. Then there are the documents, and there's now 13. With this new one, there's now 13 different documents saying It's a terrorist attack, and here's the group that's doing it. And they lied to you. Why would they lie to you? Why would they do that? At the top of next hour, we have some other breaking news that I'm, I'm, I, you need to hear. Top of the hour.